Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I am so excited because I'm going to be talking about my gift recommendations for artists this year. I know it's a bit late, so so sorry about that, but I know you guys really love these videos, so I still wanted to put one out even though it was a bit later this time. As usual, I've tried to include a variety of different types of items for a variety of different kinds of artists. I don't do a gift guide every year, but there's definitely a couple up on my channel, and those ones are still very much relevant, and I try not to repeat myself too much, so this time around I tried to focus on more unique gifts, trendy things, new products that I've discovered myself this year that I am obsessed with and I think a lot of other people would enjoy using and getting as well. But yeah, I guess without further ado, let's get into these super cool products. You know what, I think I'm just gonna get the shameless self-promotion out of the way first, but there are a couple of things that I designed this year. If you don't know, I design different types of art supplies, mostly my brand, I guess you could call it at this point, focuses on items that I myself have realized don't exactly exist elsewhere, and so I've decided to design something to fit that need, whatever it might be. And these particular items that I want to talk about first are the latest edition that I know a whole lot of people have been buying as gifts, so I figured I'd better include it since they're already popular gift ideas for artists and that is the pencil desk organizers. I'm obsessed with how these turned out, but these desk organizers are of course designed to resemble colored pencils, and they do come in a whole lot of different colors. These particular ones are actually the limited edition seasonal ones, so this one is holiday red and this one is arctic teal, but they are divided inside to keep all of your supplies organized, and they can of course store a variety of different types of art supplies. Here's mine that actually has colored pencils in it, but I'm just so in love with how these turned out and I know a whole lot of you guys already love these so I had to include them. Obviously I'm not designing products that I'm not obsessed with myself so had to include that in this video. The other product that is new this year that I definitely know you guys are obsessed with considering you keep on selling me out of them are the compact palettes. This palette can hold 42 half pan size watercolors or gouache, whatever floats your boat, as well as two mixing dishes. And keeping with the unique theme these palettes have pour painted lids, which means they're all one of a kind. I also have DIY kits if you don't want a pre-poured lid. And by the time this video goes up, there should be an entire new wave of these palettes available. There's actually probably a sale going on in my store now too, so if you want to pick anything up, all of the info for that will be in the description box, as well as all of the links and stuff for those, as well as all of the other products that I mention in this video. So if you want to find out more information about anything that I talk about, check out the description box because because it will all be listed out there. So from there, I think we're gonna go back to more inexpensive gifts and I guess we'll work our way up to the more expensive ones. So these next products could be maybe more stocking stuffer type things or additions onto some other gifts if you want. The first thing is actually a new discovery for me this year. I use them constantly. They are these Stedler Mars Lumograph black pencils. This is a set of six that ranges from 8B to HB and these are just extremely black graphite pencils. I've been using these for outlining a lot and they're just so nice and matte. They are almost at the level of colored pencil, but they're still very much a graphite pencil. They're just very cool and unique and I've really enjoyed using them. And I definitely think this is a more unique pencil. I hadn't heard of these before I went sort of looking for different types of black pencils when I needed them for a project. And they're pencils, so you've got a crazy range of different artists that would probably probably really enjoy these. Speaking of pencils, I just have to put in my all-time favorite mechanical pencil in here, which is the Pentel Orents. This one that I'm holding is actually my favorite version. They come in a whole bunch of sizes, but this is the 0.2 millimeter one. I'm sure everyone kind of groaned when I brought up a mechanical pencil because what could possibly be so interesting and unique about this one? Well, let me tell you. The Pentel Orents have an automatic lead forwarding system, so you never have to manually click the lead down. So you can just draw away to your heart's content without having to worry about scratching the surface of your paper, which I am notorious for because, you know, when you're drawing, you want to draw and not think about having to click down your lead every five seconds. So I pretty much cannot draw with another mechanical pencil now because of these, because I love them so much and they are also so inexpensive. I have much more expensive mechanical pencils and they still just do not cut it 
it compared to this. And like I mentioned, they come in a variety of sizes. I think they also come in like fancy limited edition barrels and stuff. So while I know a mechanical pencil is not inherently exciting, because this one has that more unique feature to it, I had to include it in this gift guide. Something that's kind of like pencil adjacent are these pencil grips. I actually have one on my Orance pencil that I use all of the time. These silicone pencil grips are actually meant for Apple pencils, but they do still fit normal pencils perfectly fine. But obviously this would be a great thing to get if you had someone that really loved drawing on their iPad and was using their Apple pencil all of the time, which honestly I was never a big pencil grip person until I started using these because I was gripping onto my pens and pencils so hard and for so long that it started destroying my hand. So I decided to pick some of these up and I have never looked back. I have so many of these all over my studio and obviously they're not in a very expensive gift. They come in a bunch of different colors. Could be a fun little extra add-on to a gift. The next thing is something that I've actually had for quite a while, but I only recently started using it like an absolute maniac, and that is the Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. This is a very unique product, like to the point that I'm not actually sure what to call this. It's not really an ink because as you can see it is in a jar, and honestly it's kind of the consistency of like a marshmallow fluff. It's very unusual. But this stuff is the whitest paint ink, whatever you want to call it, that I have ever used. I personally love using this with a brush and some water. Honestly, this stuff goes such a long way, but it is the whitest stuff that I have ever used. I love using it to add highlights to paintings or fixing up things that should have remained white that somehow did not remain white. And there's nothing more annoying when you're trying to add white back into a painting for whatever reason and the colors underneath bleed through or it just mixes in and it's not as white as it needs to be, and I have absolutely never had that happen with this stuff. It is a bottle of magic, so if you have anyone that enjoys adding white into their artwork, I think it's a pretty base level standard supply to have around, honestly, so absolutely recommend picking a bottle of this stuff up. The next product, well I guess products because I have two here to show you, uh, they're on a little bit of an edge between they could be like a stocking stuffer thing, they're not super expensive, but they're a little more expensive than the other other items, and that is electric erasers. This year I just discovered the wonder that is the electric eraser and started using it religiously in my work. I don't know why it took me so long, but it unfortunately did, and I don't want you to make the same mistake. But I have these two different kinds. They have two different eraser nib sizes on them. This pen type one has a very, very fine eraser nib, and this one has more of a standard size one that I have sharpened with one of those sanding blocks. So if you're looking at getting one of these, you might want to also add a sanding block to that gift list. But seriously, nothing compares to the precision of erasing with an electric eraser, just the detail that you can achieve because you don't have to move your hand to create the friction. It is rotating and creating that friction itself. So any fine detail that needs erasing, whether that is adding highlights or something back in into a drawing or just fixing minute little areas. These are absolutely perfect and like I've said I use them all of the time now and they're not that expensive and I think a lot of people would really love using them. These are just two of like a crazy amount of variety out there for electric erasers. These are both battery powered but I know there are USB rechargeable ones. Yeah, electric erasers are chef's kiss. Also in the vein of like electric art supplies, gifts, honestly I don't know where to put this in this gift guide so this is a good enough segue, but it is this Athmat electric pencil sharpener. Now I was one of those crazy people <laughs> that pretty much exclusively sharpened their drawing pencil with a knife because no pencil sharpener could come close to cutting it with the sharpness of point you can achieve with a knife. But this thing is classified as a long point pencil sharpener, which before this I didn't actually know ever existed. So this is a pretty simple design. It looks like some kind of weird alien chamber, but on the top it has this knob that you can switch and change it between two different point depths. There is the long point, which is so long it's almost too long for me, who I thought I was like the queen of a long sharpening with a knife pencils. But you have a long point option and like a more regular point option for pencils, and this thing sharpens like no other pencil sharpener I have ever 
ever had. It is incredible. It is the only sharpener I have been using. It is USB rechargeable, which is fantastic. And I know it's kind of a basic thing, but this particular one is just so amazing. It's a little more expensive than some other ones, I'm sure, but this is going to be the last pencil sharpener you ever need to own. Actually, I have another technically electronic art supply, and that is this Procreate keyboard. Now, honestly, I probably saw this in like an Instagram ad or something, and it was such a unique concept that I then like jumped to try and find where I could get one. I was fully aware that it could have been a scam, but I was so intrigued with the concept that I was willing to risk it. But it actually isn't a scam because this thing is incredible and does actually work. But it is just this mini keyboard that has all of the hotkeys pre-programmed on it that you would use in Procreate. So if you have somebody that really loves drawing on their iPad and uses Procreate, this is perfect. I know that Procreate's interface is pretty user-friendly, but this is just on a whole other level. There is absolutely every tool you could ever need, and if you're someone like me that is used to using hotkeys on a keyboard with like Photoshop and a Cintiq, then this just makes it so much easier to go from that setup that you're used to there to then using an iPad and Procreate. But there's just so many keys on this. There is like the eyedropper tool, undo, redo, eraser function, color thing. There's just buttons that pull up the different menus so it's like super fast and easy. I know I don't draw as much as a lot of people on my iPad because I'm generally more of a traditional artist, but when I do draw on my iPad, I absolutely love using this thing. It has completely transformed and made my Procreate experience so much more enjoyable, and these also aren't super expensive. I can't remember exactly how much this particular one was. I think there are a few on the market now that are Procreate keyboards, but I know this one was not incredibly expensive, so if you have somebody that is a Procreate user, I think they would really love using this. Also in the art tool department I actually have a couple of brush recommendations which these are a little more specific to watercolor or gouache artists. Definitely the watercolor, maybe the gouache, uh, but these are new discoveries of mine this year and I have not stopped using them since I've gotten them. I figured that was probably great grounds to include them in a gift guide. The first are a set of brushes that I'm sure if you've been on my channel for a while are probably sick of me going on about, but they are these Paulina Bright watercolor brushes. These are just such a nice and unique brush. I know I talk about them all the time, so I'm sorry if you've heard me go on, but these brushes are seriously amazing, so if you haven't tried them out yet, fix that. But they are these synthetic brushes that are in this quite unique shape. They are in like a quill mop brush style with the plastic ferrules and the wire binding, but they come in four sizes. You can buy them individually or as a set, but these brushes are also from an artist's own brand, which I think is really cool. Because of their more unique shape, they just hold so much water, but they keep their point beautifully. They're just such a versatile brush that I pretty much could do an entire painting just with one of these. And even though I have used them pretty much constantly for the last few months that I've been using them, like honestly almost every single day I have painted with these brushes and the sizes that I tend to use more are the zero and two it appears like. Uh, other than just a bit of staining on the tips for some like obviously really extreme colored and staining watercolor paint that I used, they have like no wear and tear marks on them. The bristles still look fantastic, they're not like doing any weird fraying moves. I haven't been particularly careful with them and they're still looking great. The second brush recommendation that I have I actually discovered thanks to comments left on my videos of people recommending that I try these out and I'm very thankful because I'm absolutely obsessed with these brushes now. But they are the Da Vinci Cassineo quill brushes. The Cassineo brushes is an entire brush range. They make like normal round brushes, all of that fun stuff, but in particular the quill brushes are what I'm talking about and recommending because they are absolutely incredible. These brushes are a bit more on the expensive side because they are a quill brush, which I also think is what makes them maybe a great gift because it's something that maybe somebody wouldn't want to spend the money on themselves, but they're such a beautiful art supply that I think it would be very well loved and appreciated. But the quill brushes come in a variety of sizes, which I always love because I have seen way too many 
that brush ranges where there's like one quill brush and that is it. I actually have an, a massive one that is still in its wrapping because I haven't worked on any painting large enough to warrant this one yet. So you can see the size difference here and I don't actually think this one is the largest one. So that is a size at two and six. But similarly to the Paulina Bright brushes, they hold incredible amounts of water, but they still retain their tip if you want to use them for more detailed work. Highly, highly, highly recommend both of those brush types. Something that I always kind of mention as a gift idea because I think it's like a pretty timeless gift, although this time I actually have a specific one to recommend, is just getting somebody like a really nice sketchbook. It is like the artist's curse that we can never have too many sketchbooks, especially nice ones, and a lot of the time artists don't really like spending a lot on a nice sketchbook, but it is definitely something lots of artists appreciate when they receive it. Of course, then actually using said sketchbook is an entirely different story, but I feel like you might be more likely to use it if it was a gift because you're not going to be paranoid about spending the money on the book and then ruining it with your sketches. So great for a gift idea. <laughs> but the sketchbook that I discovered this year and absolutely love are the Etcher sketchbooks. These, first of all, come in such a variety, like more variety than I I've seen in like 90% of watercolor sketchbook brands. They come in, of course, a lot of different sizes. They come in different paper thicknesses. This is the thinner one, I believe, and there is like a full-blown like 300 GSM watercolor paper, but they also come in hot and cold pressed, which is definitely more unique. But these are 100% cotton watercolor paper, archival, all of that fun stuff. They are truly artist grade sketchbooks. So they are my particular particular recommendation for a possible sketchbook this year. Something that's been a bit more of a long time favorite and recommendation, but they still remain very much loved and trendy, are the Jelly Cup gouache sets. This one might not have been the greatest example considering this is a blue one, so all of the colors are like blued out on the back here. But Jelly Gouache still remains a really trendy product and the sets are really well priced. The sets come in so many different sizes and colors now that there's just such a variety of options that somebody could look at getting for someone. And I've seen like a variety of different levels and ages of artists really enjoy using these. They're always super colorful, so they also physically look like a really exciting gift, which I know shouldn't mean much, but I completely get if you're not somebody that is an artist. There's a lot of art related gifts that just don't really look that exciting, but because the jelly gouache is always in like a rainbow palette of colors, they do look super fun. And honestly, the paint quality between them all seems to be about the same. Obviously, you could look at reviews online if you're interested in a particular set just to make sure that people are liking the paint. And this set, which is the Himmy 24, it comes in blue, yellow, pink, mint, I want to say. Uh, this one actually comes with a brush set and a giant mixing area that you can kind of see in the front there. So some of them are actually more than just a gouache palette. It's like a whole art kit going on. And this stuff is seriously great for a variety of artists. Whether you have somebody that is younger and more inexperienced, this stuff is just great to play around with, all the way up to somebody that is professional and just wants to play around with some new paint. I'm not actually sure if I've ever heard somebody dislike jelly gouache. That is how cool and popular this paint is. Of course, you might have somebody that already has like every jelly gouache set imaginable. And so for that, there are definitely a lot of really cool art sets out there. Also in the same vein, if maybe jelly gouache just doesn't seem quite like the right fit, I personally really love the Arteza gouache. The gouache is what I have the most experience with, although I have heard great things about the other Arteza paints. They're definitely a fantastic like in-between of really great quality with not crazy prices. The paint sets also come in a bunch of different sizes, so the the gouache sets I want to say come in like 12 paints, 24, 60 I believe is the largest set, and same goes for all of their other paint sets. So again, if you have somebody that is maybe experimenting with different types of art mediums or has expressed interest in trying out different types of paints, those might be fantastic. Arteza stuff in general just seems to be very well loved and very reasonably priced, so that might be a great place to look for possible art supplies, gift options. But there's also just in general a ton of really cool 
little art sets out here. This is something that I've picked up a while ago just because I wanted to try it out, which is perfect. Like so many art companies now create these like trial sets almost where they are smaller quantities of their like fully professional products for artists to try out and I guess figure out which version of their product they might like. I know I saw one that I think it was Liquitex makes a pouring medium set of the different textures of pouring medium they make now. But the set in particular that I picked up is this Tri Art Acrylic Mediums set. Now I actually personally did not pick this up specifically for the use of acrylic paint, but that is what it is meant for. And it is these 15 small jars of their various types of medium. So there is like matte gel, low viscosity gel, copper cinder gel, walnut shell gel, lots more that I'm not gonna bother rhyming off, but pretty much I would guess maybe almost every single different type of acrylic medium that TriArt makes. And there's just a lot of really cool sets along the same vein as that. I know the acrylic mediums and pouring mediums don't necessarily seem like a super exciting gift, but honestly, for artists it is. We love trying out new art supplies no matter how boring it looks. Something that's also sort of like a generalized gift idea, although I do have specific recommendations as well, are art books. Art books make a fantastic gifts and there's always so many new ones that come out all of the time, especially for like movies, TVs, video games. Most of the like big budget productions now come out with an art book, which is incredible. I know the season two Mandalorian art book comes out in a couple of weeks, but there's just so many amazing art books already already out there and it's kind of easy to possibly get one for someone because if you know the media that they consume and enjoy you could then look up to see if they have an art book for that particular subject matter. But some actually specific art book recommendations that I have. This first one might be great to add if you are getting somebody a paint set and that is the 1500 color mixing recipes. This in general is just one of my all-time favorite art books and as the title clearly states, it is a color mixing recipe book. This would be great if you have somebody that's just sort of learning and figuring out color theory and how to mix up colors, but honestly even if you had like a professional artist, we could all use a refresh sometimes. <laughs> but this basically has recipes for every color imaginable. There are specific color sections for different types of subject matter, so there is like a skin tone section. It has recipes for all different types of paint and just in general is a fantastic art book to keep around your studio. This one's a little art book adjacent. It's just not exactly like the other art books, but I think it's really cool and for the right person this would be a phenomenal gift. And it is this Women in Art, 50 Fearless Creatives Who Inspire the World. So this is technically classified as a young adult book, but as the title would suggest, this has 50 different women in art throughout history and a short biography of each one. But it also has really beautiful illustrations, so I think a lot of different age groups and artists would really love this. A one-page biography isn't like a super deep dive into any particular person, but it does give like a pretty good summary of just at a glance even the amount of artists out there and different types of artists. There are photographers in this, painters, there's Frida Kahlo right there, architects, sculptors, fashion designers, just so many different types of creative jobs that it's just a really cool book to look through. And again, the illustrations in it are beautiful, so it's a bit of an unusual one, but I do really love it. And I think, like I mentioned, for the right person, this could be a perfect gift. And the last specific art book recommendation that I have is honestly one of my favorite art books of all time and easily one of my most valued and prized and it is this Hayao Miyazaki book. Now this particular art book is very special because it is the book that they came out with for the Academy Museum exhibit. Like it got to the point that my dad and I pretty much made a pact that we thought we were gonna have to go to the Academy Museum specifically for this book and we were willing to do it. No, but thankfully this book is available online 
not that I wouldn't also like to go to the Academy Museum, but for now it was much easier to order it. But I had been obsessed with Studio Ghibli movies since I was like five, so this is like a long time of course it was going to be like one of my favorites, but this book definitely specifically focuses on the art aspect of Hayao Miyazaki movies, so there's a ton of watercolor sketches in here and the animation cells act you can actually like see the cell portion it's very much like here's the princess mononoke ones that i don't know if you can see the cell around them but it is very much an art book that is related to Hayao Miyazaki. Like here you can see some Kiki sketches. I believe there's also like exclusive things in here that they took out of the Studio Ghibli archives for the Academy Museum exhibit that this is like other than the museum the only place where you're gonna see them. So this is just a very special art book and if you have somebody that is also Hayao Miyazaki movie Studio Ghibli obsessed then this is the book to get. And the last item that I wanted to talk about is definitely like the top tier luxury item of this gift guide. Sorry to your wallets in advance, but it is the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencil set. Now I know these pencils are incredibly expensive, which is why I've left it to the end and given you a warning, but they are just so, so nice. Again, it's kind of one of those things that I think most a little more mature artists like you probably are not gonna want to get this for somebody who's just starting out. Artists that are at the level of appreciating the Luminance pencils, I feel like they're pretty infamously known across the board. A lot of people if they haven't gotten a chance to try them out are probably interested in it if they are into using colored pencils in their work. They're just kind of one of those art supplies on a pedestal that everyone kind of knows about and is intrigued by. Again, they do come in a variety of set sizes which is nice so while they are all expensive they're definitely ranges of expensive but the pencils are absolutely gorgeous they're packaged beautifully as well they're all like laid out individually in foam but just the quality of pencil is absolutely fantastic. Sort of like an asterisk option alternative to those that I've heard great things about are the Derwent Lightfast pencils. I have personally not had a chance to try those out yet, but I have heard from a ton of people in my comment sections that say they are very similar, especially with that Lightfast aspect that I feel like is one of the defining features or sought after features of the Luminance pencils is the Lightfast and so the Derwent ones as well are a reasonably expensive pencil, although not quite as expensive as the Luminance ones, so that could also be a fantastic option if you are looking at a pencil set for somebody. And that is my gift guide for this year. Like I mentioned earlier, I have done a couple of other gift guides on my channel, so if you haven't quite figured out the perfect gift for whoever you're looking for, I will link those, card those here for you to check out as well. Please feel free to leave any art supply gift recommendations in the comments. I would definitely appreciate possibly some ideas as well I'm sure as a lot of other people that come across this video. But that is everything so thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.